Hey, how you doing? Hi, good. Thanks for coming in. Uh, okay, so maybe we want to get more summer. Maybe this summer wasn't enough for us, and you're just a guy to to go to to ask on cheap travel, how to do it cheaply. So if we want to find some sunshine mm -hmm. on a tight budget, how do we do that? Where do we go? Well, the first thing is look away from your typical destinations, places like Cuba and these five five star resorts. Right. They're just going to drain your dollar. What you'll spend in a week. I can send you to a place where that would last a month. Places like Ooh. Southeast Asia, Southern Africa. I think the best idea is leave the suitcase at home and put on a pack. Really try to get off the beaten right. path. Um, these Don't plan so much, maybe? Well, the best plan is no plan, as far as I'm concerned. You know, with these third world destinations, a lot of times you really don't know what's going to be there, what to expect. And if you put together an itinerary before you arrive, Chances are when you get there, you'll find something new and want to go off in a different direction. So mm -hmm. when you arrive without a plan, um, you can just take advantage of things as they appear. And these third world destinations, and the other thing is they're, they're welcoming for, for tourists. They really are inviting, and they make you feel at home from, from the moment that you arrive. No kidding, okay. Yeah. So, uh, and what about from a security aspect? I know uh, some people that might not appeal to them because they want the security of the resort and yeah, yeah you know so i spent a lot of time in in south africa and one of the first things you hear about south africa is it's got a, a problem with crime and in my four years there i never once came across a hostile situation as mentioned these people are really happy to have people visiting their countries for the first time so as far as that security is concerned right. it's really it's not a problem. Uh, I mean, touch wood, I never never had any problems anywhere in my travels. And the other thing with, with budget traveling and traveling with a pack, you have a really tight-knit community of fellow travelers that you might not find in a hotel. You know, you're in a hotel, you, you go to your room, you don't know who's staying next to you or across right, the right. hall. When you're backpacking, you come across these travelers that you've you've met along the way and they become your buddies. They become your, you know, the eyes in the back of your head, and that yeah. adds an extra element of security that you really don't find in the in the five star places. Uh, it's Catfish here in the live at eight five startup. We're talking with Matt Hamilton, a, a travel author. And uh, when you go someplace, it, it sounds like a, an awful long way to travel. Is what what you're describing? What's the minimum window somebody should set aside? Is it is it two weeks at least? Well, because you're going to be you know, spending a couple of days traveling to the destination? Kind exactly. Of I like to say bare minimum three weeks. No you kidding, know, a place okay. like South Africa, it's a day and a half travel there and a day and a half back. Give yourself a day to get over the jet lag. Yeah. There's a chunk of your trip. Um, and the other thing with these countries, and this is a great way to save money, is, is travel local. Don't jump on flights to get from point A to point B. Use local transportation. It's going to save you a pile of money, yeah. but it's also going to take you a little bit longer because you know the the buses probably aren't roadworthy or the the roads are a little dodgy and there's going to yeah. be holdups along the way. But because of that, you don't want to have just two weeks because most of your trip will be spent sitting on this on this bus. So you actually get a chance to explore. It talk with people, that sort of thing as well, instead of just hopping on a plane, you know? And that's the other side to it. I mean, getting from A to B is, is part of the adventure. It's part of the experience. Don't look at it as taking six hours to travel 200 kilometers. Look out the window. Look at the, the people traveling the bus. For the locals, a lot of these people, this is a big event for them. They don't really have a lot of money to get from A to B. So when they do travel, they're in their, their Sunday best. They've got picnics put together. They're singing. It really is a, a fascinating journey. Well, in my case, I want to take a, a week in January and go somewhere hot. So can you give me a suggestion for something I can do that only takes a week? Whew. Somewhere. Let me think about that one. Ah. Even though there are the five-star resorts, there are still many places where you can go to get off the beaten path. So Cuba, for example. I've had friends who went down to Cuba who've gone the five-star angle, and I've had other friends who've gone and stayed with local families who've mm. taken the local buses. Wow. So it's you know, three and a half, four hours, five hours away, quick yeah. flight. But once you're there, yeah. you know, you have your week, but you can immerse yourself into the lifestyle and people of Havana as opposed to just sitting behind a a gated community at some big resort and never seeing an aspect of Cuban life. Are things in, in Cuba fairly cheap to do and, and places to stay, that sort of thing? Once you arrive, you've paid your airfare there and back, but filling in that donut, 
Yes, uh, Cuba is also changing. Like a lot of places close to North America have that trickle effect of tourism and the American dollar, and that seems to jack places up. Right. Most of the places I've gone have been on the other side of the world, like Southeast Asia. Um, when I was in Laos, for example, I was living on ten dollars a day. Right. Uh, ten bucks a day. Ten That's bucks a amazing. day, and that was everything. That was my accommodation, three meals, oh, any cool. miscellaneous, any extra expenses, transportation. Like I had a hard time spending. Ten dollars a day, and in Thailand, I spent three months based in one spot on this beach in Koh Phangan, and my total expenses for the three months was about twelve hundred dollars. Wow. I think that's the other thing. If you spend all your time trying to see everything, well, first of all, you're not going to see everything. Your country's got too much to offer, right. and you're going to waste time moving all over the place, spending money on transportation, spending extra money on food on the road. Where if you base yourself in one spot, you're not spending that. And you have a chance to really take in local insight, get to know the people, find the the spots that maybe aren't in the guidebooks, and really you know take in the place for what it's worth. Is it better to travel with a buddy or to just get out there and see what you find? Personally, I I love traveling alone because it gives you that complete freedom. You never have to compromise. You can take advantage of any situation, any opportunity. And you're right. You're almost forced into this position where you need to strike up conversations with with other people right i think the biggest misconception about traveling alone is that you're alone you're you're never ever alone you're always surrounded by other people other yeah, travelers yeah. people from that city from that place in fact it's kind of difficult to find yourself completely isolated uh my tip for people traveling together i've had buddies come out and visit me the best thing to do is spend some time together and then head off in different directions for right. a week and say, hey, I'll meet you there next yeah, Saturday. That's a great idea. And then, you know, if you're good buddies, it's, there's no problem taking time apart. But that allows you to be free, yeah. be yeah. selfish if you want, do things that you really want to do without having to compromise at all. And really interact with, uh, with other people besides your friend. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And you were saying instead of a suitcase, take a backpack. What are the things that you should put in? Because you're very restricted. It's smaller. Less things can fit in it. What What are things that you need to take with you? Less is best, I yeah. think, is the best thing. I think uh, a lot of people pack for every situation under the sun. And when you're off in these third world countries, you know what? You really don't need your, your nicest clothes. You can bring an old T-shirt. In fact, don't go shopping. Pull something out from the bottom of the drawer yeah, that you haven't worn for a while. That. <laughs> well, you know, and when you're there, you'll find that, you know, there's no sense in bringing a lot of appliances that you can plug in because sometimes there's, there's no electricity. There's nowhere right. to plug anything in. Mm -hmm. um, less is best. I travel with about four T-shirts, a couple pairs of shorts, swim shorts, uh, a jumper to keep warm at night, and that's about, that's about it. Wow. I live barefoot. Um, that's the other nice thing. A lot of these places in Africa, you yeah. You kick your shoes off and stroll around barefoot. So the big hiking boots that I packed at the beginning of my trip, they collected <laughs> mold there. over the years. So yeah. the money that you save on the trip, you use for pedicures when you yeah. get back. <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> uh, it's the Live 885 Startup. Matt Hamilton here, uh, a travel author. And you go to live885.com, you'll find a link there through the Startup blog for uh, Matt's work. And uh, we'll leave you with one final question this morning. I was thinking about your point about not bringing things that you can plug in because you don't necessarily have a place you can plug them in. So when you get home, what is your one plug-in appliance mm. that you have missed the most? You know what's fun? I really enjoy kicking my feet up and watching uh, a loop of Sports Desk, Sports Center. I miss oh, yeah. my North American <laughs> sports. I'm a yeah. sports junkie. Right. Uh, and traveling the world, you don't get football, basketball, baseball. You get cricket and <laughs> soccer, which is fine. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I really enjoy coming home and watching TV because it is something I do not do at all. Um, it's just you know, a waste of time turning on the boob tube when you're sitting on the other side <laughs> yeah. of the planet. Yeah. And you know what's amazing? Yeah. There's a lot of people that actually go away to South Africa and sit and watch TV. Watch Waste shows, and it it blows my mind. I sit there and <laughs> shake my head every time I see it. So, <laughs> thanks for telling us about this. We'll uh, send people to the website live885.com. Thanks, man. Hey, thanks for.